Among the Hidden by Margaret Peterson Haddix, Chapter 17. Luke spent practically every second of the next three days either reliving his secret visit to Jen or planning another one. The first day, a government inspector came out to examine the garner's crop, so Luke stayed in his room the entire day. The second day it rained, and Dad spent the morning doing bookwork in the house. The third day, Dad was back in the fields, but when Luke crept over to the back door promptly at 9 a.m. and daringly flipped the light switch, he got no answering flash from Jen's house. Maybe the clocks in her house were slow. He left the light on for 15 whole minutes, terrified the whole time that someone besides Jen might see it. Finally, heartsick, he switched it off and climbed with shaky legs back to his room. What if something had happened to Jen? What if she were sick, dying even, alone in her house? What if she'd been caught or turned in? Just from the little time Luke had spent with her, he could tell. She took a lot of risks. It had never occurred to him that knowing another person would give him someone else to worry about. He steadied himself by leaning against the wall at the top of the stairs and reminded himself of less frightening possibilities. Maybe one of her parents was just out running errands, not working, so they were going to be home soon. Maybe. He tried to think of another safe reason Jen hadn't signaled for him to come, but he had so much trouble picturing her ordinary life that his imagination failed him. He found out the next day, when he risked a dash to Jen's house as soon as Jen answered his signal. Where were you? He asked instantly. When? Yesterday? She yawned, sliding the door shut behind him. Did you try to come over? I'm sorry. Mom had a free day and made me go shopping. Luke gaped at her. Shopping? You went out? Jen nodded nonchalantly. But I didn't see you leave, Luke protested. Jen looked at him as if she seriously wondered what if he had a brain. Of course not. I was hiding. The back seat of our car is hollowed out. Dad had it custom built. You went out? Luke repeated in awe. Well, it's not like I saw anything until we got to the mall. Two hours of riding in the dark is not my idea of fun. I hate it. But at the mall, you got out. You didn't have to hide? Jen laughed at his amazement. Mom got me a Ford shopping pass a long time ago. Supposedly, I'm her niece. It's good enough to convince store clerks. But if the population police ever found me at a roadside stop, I'd be dead. There you have it. My mother's priorities. Shopping is more important than my life. Luke shook his head and sat down on the couch because his knees were feeling a little shaky. I didn't know, he said. I didn't know thirds could do that. What if mother and dad got him a forged pass? For a minute, he could almost picture it. They could hide him under burlap bags in the pickup truck bed until they got into town. Everybody in town knew mother and dad. Everybody knew mother and dad only had two sons, Matthew and Mark. You went to the city, he said. Well, yeah, Jen said. You don't see any moles around here, do you? What was it like? Luke almost whispered. Boring, Jen said. Really, really boring. Mom wanted to buy me a dress. Who knows why? So we went to one store after another, and I had to try on all these dresses that scratched and pricked and poked me. And then she made me get a bunch of bras. Oh, sorry, she said, when Luke blushed a deep red. I guess you don't talk much about bras at your house. Matthew and Mark do sometimes when they're being dirty, Luke said. Well, bras aren't dirty, Jen said. They're just torture devices invented by men or mothers or something. Oh, Luke said, looking down. But anyway, Jen said, with a bounce that propelled her off the couch. I checked you out on the computer and you're all right. You don't exist. Not officially anyway. So you're safe and hearing Jen say that so flippantly, you don't exist, made Luke feel funny. How do you know I'm safe? He interrupted. Fingerprints, Jen said. When Luke gave her a blank look, she explained. My brother Braun went through this phase when he wanted to be a detective. Not that he ever would have been smart enough for it. And I remembered he still has a fingerprinting kit. So I tested for your fingerprints on things you touched, like on the TV. I got a really good print off the wall. Then I scanned that into the computer, linked it into the national file of fingerprints, and voila! I discovered your fingerprints don't exist, so neither do you, officially. She made a mocking face for emphasis. 
Luke wanted to ask. The population police can't find me because of what you did, can they? But he understood so little of what she'd explained that he didn't think it would help to ask anything. And Jen was already on to the next thought. And anyway, you seem trustworthy. So, now that I know you're safe, I can tell you about the rally and show you our secret chat rooms and everything. Jen was already leaving the room, so he had to follow just to hear the rest of her sentence. Want something to eat or drink? She asked, hesitating at the doorway to the grand kitchen. I was so surprised I forgot to be a good hostess the last time. What'll it be? Soda? Potato chips? But those are illegal, Luke protested. He remembered reading something about junk food in one of the books in the attic and asking his mother about it. She'd explained that it was something people used to eat all the time until the government shut down the factories that made it. She wouldn't tell him why. But as a special treat, she'd brought out a bag of potato chips she'd been saving for years and shared them, just with him. They were salty, but hard to chew. Mother had pretended to like them only because Mother seemed to want him to. Yeah, well, we're illegal too, so why shouldn't we enjoy ourselves? Jen asked, thrusting a bowl of chips at him. To be polite, Luke took one chip, and then another, and another. Those potato chips were so good he had to hold himself back from grabbing them by the handful. Jen stared at him. Do you go hungry sometimes? She asked in a low voice. No, Luke said in surprise. Some shattered children do because they don't have food ration cards and the rest of the family doesn't share, she said, opening a refrigerator that was bigger than every appliance in the gardener's kitchen put together. My family can get all the food we want, of course, but she looked at him in a way that once again made him conscious of its ragged clothes. How does your family get food for you? The question puzzled Luke. The same way they get it for themselves, he said. We grow it. We have a garden. I used to work in it a lot, before you know. And then we have the hogs, or we used to. And I guess sometimes we trade a butchered hog for someone else's butchered steer so we'd have beef. Those were all shadowy transactions in Luke's mind. He had to strain his brain to remember overhearing Dad or Matthew reporting to Mother, ready to cook some steak. Johnston up near Libertyville wants some ham. Jen dropped the plastic bottle full of brown liquid. You eat meat? She exclaimed. Sure, don't you? Luke asked. When Dad can get it, Jen said, bending to pick up the bottle. She poured a glass full for Luke and one for herself. Both drinks fizzed and bubbled. Even his cloud isn't that great. The government's been trying to force everyone, even the barons, to become vegetarians. Why? Luke asked. Jen handed him his glass. Something about vegetables being more efficient, she said. Farmers have to use a lot more land to produce one pound of meat than to produce a pound of, what's it called? Soybeans. Luke wrinkled his nose at the thought of eating soybeans. I don't know, he said slowly. We always fed our hogs the grain we couldn't sell because it didn't meet government standards. But since the government made us get rid of our hogs, Dad just lets that grain rot in the field. Really? Jen grinned as if he just announced the overthrow of the government. She thumped him on the back just as he took his first sip of soda. Between the bubbly drink and her enthusiastic pounding, Luke started coughing. Jen didn't seem to notice. See, I told you you'd be a big help. I'm gonna post that on a bulletin board right now. Wait! Luke sputtered between coughs. He didn't know what she was talking about, but he couldn't let her get his family in trouble. He chased her down the hall, catching up just as she was sliding into the chair in front of the computer. She switched it on and made the beep 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 sounds Luke had heard the first time. Luke stood to the side, carefully out of sight of the screen. It's not gonna bite you, Jen said. Grab a chair, sit down. Luke inched back. But the government, he said, the government's incompetent and stupid, Jen said. Get it? Believe me, if they were watching through my computer screen, I'd know by now. Meekly, Luke pulled over a padded chair and sat down. He watched as Jen typed in. If the government let farmers feed their animals the grain they can't sell, there'd be more meat. Luke was relieved that she hadn't mentioned his family. But unless the government was spying on them, he couldn't understand what difference it made for her to write that. Where'd that go? he asked as the words disappeared. Who's going to see it? 
I put it on a Department of Agricultural bulletin board. Anyone with a computer can find it now. Maybe a government worker with half a brain will see it and actually think for the first time this decade. But Luke squinted in confusion. Why does it matter? Jen fixed her gaze on Luke. You don't even know, do you? she asked. You don't know why they passed the population law. No, Luke admitted. It's all about food, Jen said. The government was scared we'd all ran out of food if the population kept growing. That's why they made you and me illegal, to keep people from starving. Luke suddenly felt doubly guilty for the potato chips he was still cramming into his mouth. He swallowed hard and lowered his hands to his lap instead of back into the chip bowl. So if I didn't eat, my food would go to someone who was legal, Luke said. But in his family, that would just be Matthew or Mark, and they were hardly starving. Matthew was even starting to sport the same roll of fat around his waist that Dad had. Then Luke remembered the tramp from long ago saying, I ain't eaten three days. Was that Luke's fault? Jen laughed. Stop looking so worried, she said. That is what the government thinks, but they're wrong. My dad says there's plenty of food. It's just not distributed right. That's why they've got to stop the population law. That's why they've got to recognize you and me and all the other shadow kids. That's why we're going to have the rally. As ignorant as he was, Luke could tell from the way she said it that the rally was important. Can you tell me about the rally now? He asked humbly. Yes, Jen said. She pushed away from the computer and twirled on her chair. Hundreds of us, all the shadow children I could track down, are going to march on the government and protest. We'll go right to the president's house. We won't leave them alone until they give us the same rights as everybody else. Just my luck, Luke thought. I finally meet another third child, and she's absolutely crazy. And, Jen said, as bubbly as a shaken soda, you can come too. Won't it be great? Chapter 18. I, Luke said, he couldn't look at Jen's triumphant grin. I don't think I, he thought about how terrifying it was just running back and forth between his house and Jen's. Even this morning, on his third run through their yards, his heart had pounded so hard, he wondered if it could burst from fear. And in the yard, at least, he was sure, or as sure as he could be, that no one was watching. How could Jen think he would dare go out in public, where he knew people could see him? People in government, no less, and say, I am a third child. I want to be treated like everyone else. Scared, Jen said softly. Luke could only nod. Jen turned back to the computer. Well, I am too, she said matter-of-factly. She typed something, then looked back at Luke. Some. But don't you think it'll be a relief? No more hiding? No more pretending? Just being free? Luke wondered if he'd always misunderstood the meaning of the word relief. Jen's rally sounded like his worst nightmare. You can think about it, she said. You don't have to decide anything today. Now, ready to chat? Luke looked back at the computer screen, where rows of words were unfurling. Carlos, it's 105 degrees here, and my parents think it's a waste to run the AC during the day. Can you say heartless? Sure. Why don't you just crank it up, then turn it off again right before they get home? That's what Pat and I do. They'll never know. Carlos, yeah, but my parents probably read their electric bill. Yolanda, so what are they going to do, ground you? Carlos. Good point. I'm searching for the temp control right now. Yolanda, where's Jen? Sean, you know she never gets up this early. Carlos, curses. My parents have the temp control locked somehow. Told you they were evil. Where is Jen? I can't wait for her sarcastic comment. Luke read the words Jen was typing. I'm right here, and Sean, I do so get up early. I just don't always choose to see you first thing. And Carlos, what's wrong? Is there a sweat in your eyes? There's only one R in sarcastic. She hit another key, and the words appeared right up with everyone else's. They were followed quickly by another line. Sean, good morning to you too, Jen. Glad to see you're still among the living. Jen typed quickly, no, just among the hidden. Not the same thing at all. Then she sent it too. What is this? Luke asked. Some sort of game? You remember Jen mentioning a Carlos before, and never explaining who he was. 
Were these some sort of computerized imaginary friends? Carlos, Sean, Yolanda, they're all other third children. Sean's even got a brother, Pat, who's a fourth child. This is how I talk to them. Luke watched the next line of type appear. Carlos, thanks for the sympathy, Jen. But how? Luke asked, still doubtful. Oh, you know, it's the net, Jen said. If you got a spare hour or two sometimes, I'll give you the technical gobbledygook to explain it. All I care about is that it works. I'd die without someone to talk to. She was typing even as she talked. Luke craned his head to see what she wrote. Guess what? The kid I told you about, Luke, is here with me. Quickly three, hi Lukes, appeared on the screen. Luke fought down panic. But the government, he said they'll find me. Jen playfully slugged his arm. Chill, okay? Nobody from the government can get into this chat room. We all use a password. Just their children know it. And anyhow, even if someone read this, what would they know? Just that someone in the world, somewhere in the world, is a kid named Luke. Big deal. But they can trace you through the computer and then they'll find me too. Luke's heart was still pounding. Look, if they could trace people through the computer or through this chat room, wouldn't they have found me a long time ago? Jen asked. Luke tried to think clearly. Your parents, he said. You said they bribed people, so you're safe. But mine... Jen was shaking her head. No, I'm not safe, she said grimly. Even my parents couldn't bribe the population police if they found me. Maybe to keep them from looking, but maybe not even that. The population police got some ridiculously big reward for every illegal they find. Why do you think I hide it all? Why do you think we have to have the rally? Everybody ought to be safe. And nobody should have to use bribes just to walk down the street or go to a mall or take a ride in a car. Luke glanced back at the computer screen where the conversation continued. How did all those people find out the password, he asked. How did you? Well, I created the chat room, so I made it up, Jen said. And I knew a couple of other shadow kids, and I got my parents and their parents to get the password to them. And then some of those kids spread the password to other kids they knew. Last time I counted, I had contact with 800 kids. Luke shook his head. He didn't think even his parents knew that many people. So what's the password, he asked. Free, Jen said. It's free.